Will, so look, thanks for taking the time to do the measurements. No problem. What, what's the next stage now for you? The next stage for, for me now, obviously with yourself as, is we need to determine what kind of parameters we want on your dry suit. Okay. Um, so we've got a dry suit order form, which we have here, which is consists of two pages. Um, each on, it, on each form is all of our models of dry suits. Mm -hmm. There's a different form for men's and for ladies first. Okay. Um, the ladies first have got a few more different options to, to the men's. And okay. also ladies are also accessible to all the men's suits as well. Um, so as you can see from this form, we've got four men or four women as well. So the Fine. ladies can have the men or the, the standard suits in a ladies cut as well. So first thing we need to determine what dry suit you're actually going to go for, which I believe is an Elite Plus. Yeah, so on that question then, I mean, what what are you seeing as the, 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 the purposes of those suits? Who are they aimed at? Who, who's buying yeah. what? Yeah, so we've got a, quite a wide range. So at the moment, we've got, actually got six suits in the range. Um, on this order form, it's five, but we've actually got six. We've got the um, another suit called the Silver Moon that's mm -hmm. actually based off another dry suit model. Um, what we've got, we'll start kind of at the, at the, at the top end of this sheet. So we've got the E-Space and the Enduro. These are the Santi's first suits that they actually ever made. Okay. Um, and these are based off um, some of the older trilaminate dry suits, so the very, very thick Cordura. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're not kind of the, the newer cut that we have nowadays. Um, so they are cut in a T, in a T structure, okay. um, like a lot of the older trilaminate suits were. And they're typically used now for military and for commercial purposes because they are pretty much bomb proof okay and um, for us as divers that is nice for uh, kind of us three guys that are all instructors that want bomb proof dry suits sure but with it being an old material there's not all that much movement or flexibility okay. in there um so they're kind of suits that we tend to see a lot more like i said commercial and uh, military military suits we then come up the scale so we've got the e-light mm -hmm. although the name puts it off this is kind of our harder wearing let's say sport diving suit so this was kind of santi's first suit that they stepped in with a really nice cut a thinner material that was very very durable um and this is a kind of suit we'd recommend to be, uh, a lot of instructors that they do spending a lot of time in the water mm -hmm. inside caves and wrecks where there's going to be a lot of abrasions this is the suit that we say look this is the suit for you if that is your constant environment yeah we then move up and we've got the e-light plus the e -Lite, the plus means it's a hybrid of two suits in some degree so we've actually got two models of plus suits we've got the e-light plus and we've got the e-motion plus and the plus just stands for kind of a hybrid suit so it's mm -hmm. a mix of materials the e-light plus is a mixed material of the e-light so mm -hmm. our hardest wearing material as in the sport diving range yeah. that we know is great um, and our new material which is the e-light plus material which is based off the same design of the e-light material but it's mm -hmm. just very slightly thinner and yeah. a little bit more stretchy it's got a little bit of stretch into okay. the material as well yeah and these yeah. are both ripstop nylons as well and um, so if you have a look on the actual for on the swatch itself as you can see the little squares yes so if you create a tear in that area that tear will only tear to the edge, edge of that uh, that mm -hmm. um square itself yeah and as you can see going through some of these other suits we get bigger squares and bits and blah like that. So then there'd be more of a rip in one of the, right. the, yeah. the, the older yeah. materials where the, the um, squares are a lot bigger. Um, mm -hmm. So the E-Lite Plus is kind of the hybrid between the two. So like, let's say you, yourselves, guys, where you're going to be diving in wrecks and caves, but you also want a bit more flexibility in the suit, then the E-Lite Plus would be a better suit for you. Okay. Moving down the range, we've got the E-Motion. The E-Motion is pretty much now a dedicated travel suit. So it's nice and lightweight. Mm -hmm. It's not the most hard wearing of dry suits, but it's enough for most sports divers to go abroad yeah. and do the traveling that they want to do with a dry suit. Um, but with a working diver and people diving in harsher conditions, the dry suit will hold up, but you will start to see a lot more deterioration in the material mm -hmm. and potential puncture problems as well through the material because yep. it's a lot thinner. Okay. And then we've got the E-Motion Plus. The E-Motion is based off the lighter weight suit, mm -hmm. but it's got some of the harder wearing materials okay. in there in the places that we need it, like through the crotch where your crotch strap's coming through, on the lower arms where your computers are on and off all the time. Okay, so this is mostly about kind of the exterior protection across That's the range, but the, the sewing, the taping, the gluing. Exactly the same process on all of the suits. So okay. all of the Santi suits are um, sewn, the material panels are sewn together mm -hmm. and then rubber taped on the inside. Okay, okay. And so for you as a retailer or a distributor, how much are you moving of each brand? I mean, which are the ones that are uh, the most popular, would you say, for the divers? So it, within the Santi range, so the most popular ones we sell are the E-Lite Plus and mm. the E-Motion Plus. Fine. The reason is, is they are just a hybrid of both suits. It gives the diver the best of both worlds. Yeah. And for the E-Lite, we've got the non-traveling diver or the more working diver. And then the E-Motion Plus gives it 
allows people to Fine. go a little bit more travel because okay. it's a little bit more lightweight, but still gives enough yep. um, enough durability for most divers. Okay. And then you mentioned earlier about the ladies first. Yes. And that's an interesting kind of idea for me. Can you say a bit more about who that's aimed at or yep. so what makes it different? It kind of in the name a little bit. So the ladies first line is for ladies. Um, it was designed because a lot of the ladies said, look, the, the men's suits are they're just a bit more, bit normal. We want it. We want to all stick out a little bit. Um, so it's kind of a bit of a conjunction with Halcyon because Halcyon started to bring out a few ladies' colours and bits and bobs. Mm -hmm. um, so they did kind of a, a, a dual thing where they did a ladies' first line, so you can buy a Halcyon wing with a ladies' first in the same colours that you can buy a Santi suit mm -hmm. in ladies' colours, and it just gave the ladies a little bit more kind of. I don't know, a bit more excitement because they're at their own line as such. Does it alter the cut at all? Or? So the cut doesn't alter at all between kind of uh, the lady's cut or the lady's first line cut. We've got a, a set cut for a lady mm -hmm. and that cut doesn't change between the two. Okay. Um, it's mainly just kind of colours and trims and bits and up like that. The, okay. A difference between the regular woman's suits or the lady's first But line. isn't there a different material? As well in some of there, the there, there's stuff. a li there's one little di one different material which is this material here yep. which is only used for trim so it's not in the construction of the dry suit it's just a trim trim material so it's Fine. not actually a dry material either okay um, which is just added on for a little bit of trim and sure. it looks looks nice okay great thanks for that we've selected your dry suit which you're going to have an Elite Plus is that correct yes yeah? thank you so we've ch we chose the kind so we're going to go for Elite Plus. Mm -hmm. And of course, you're a man, so we're gonna we're gonna select the man box. Sure. So we can pop that in there, and then as we move down the the form itself, we've got size. Yep. So as you can see, we've got made to measure over here. So yep. you're gonna go for a made to measure suit, so we can tick that box. But just to explain the other boxes a little bit more, we've then got standard size. Okay. So after well, I've measured you, I would typically work out what standard size you'd fall into, and if we need some measurement changes, what they would be. Mm -hmm. And this is where I would I'd put that standard size in. Okay. So I'd either put large or large long. Um, underneath that option we've got regular or slim fit which mm -hmm. is what we spoke a little bit about earlier but regular fit is for uh, to be measured with the thickest undergarment that you're going to be wearing. Fine. Um, typically Santi would base it off their range so that would be the BZ400 mm -hmm. um, and then slim fit is for let's say a cave cut divers. So the guys are going to be wearing a thinner undergarment okay. and want a very very nice cut on the suit and no excess material yep. anywhere. Yep. So that's the two options. So with the with the environments that you're going to be diving in Vaz I'd probably recommend having a regular fitting suit. So you um, have the flexibility of the garments. Exactly. So you've got okay. a bit more added flexibility flexibility in there for the undergarments you're going yep. to be wearing okay. in the colder waters. The next part is the important part for most people is selecting colour. Fine. <laughs> so we've got the colour boxes here and these are all the colours and in what places we're allowed them colours on the suit. Fine. So we've got in the body trunk, the body trunk is the front area yep. and the back area as well. Fine. So that's just the front and the back panels as well. Got it. We've then got side gauze. The side gauze runs from the inside of the wrist up the arm and then down the sides of the suit down to the waist. So they're the two places you can choose your colour. So we've got a few colours. So we've got black, mm -hmm. blue, mm -hmm. grey yep. and scarlet red. Yeah, so I think I've seen these on the website actually, mm -hmm. yes. Cool. So we've also got the swatches here as well. So you Fine. can see each colour and have kind of a little feel with them. Yep. So the red and the grey are an individual individual piece of material themselves. And then the blue, oh sorry, sorry, the, the Grey is actually backed with the blue as well, so they can Fine. use the same material for both colours. Got it, got and it. And then we've got the black colour itself on the top. Fine, so fine. Do you know what colours you're going to go for? Yeah, so it's black on the trunk, yeah. and then it's a grey. We're going to go for the grey for, for on the side. No yeah. worries, that's cool. And then we've got, as we move down the form, we've got zipper. Mm -hmm. So what dry suit zipper we're going to put in. Um, with the Elite Plus, you, you can have the option of a metal zipper or a plastic zipper. Sure. Little differences between the two. The metal zippers are a much more durable um, zipper themselves, but they are very rigid and very stiff. So mm -hmm. in terms of flexibility, you'd lose a lot of flexibility by yeah. having a metal zipper. Um, with the plastics, again, it's the opposite. Not as durable, but a much, much, much more yeah. flexibility in the suit, um, which a lot of people would much prefer. Yeah. Um, the warranty is actually a little bit longer on the plastic zips. It's a year with metal zips and two years with plastic zips. Okay. So you also get a bit of a longer longer warranty period on that. What, what's well. your view on the plastic? Because I mean, it's been a while now. They've got better over time. Yeah. So they've got a lot, they've got a lot better. And um, we've also with Santi as well. We've just changed dry suit uh, zip manufacturer. Mm -hmm. So we were using the YKK zips. We've now gone back to the T zipper. So T-Zip have redesigned their zipper and they've got a new one. Um, it's quite obvious to, to notice the difference between their old zipper and the new one. The yeah. old one was all black yeah. and the new one's like a light grey. That's the master seal, isn't that's it? That's the master seal, yeah. that's correct. Okay. And that's the new zipper we've been using. That, and that's been now tested within Santi for three years now. Okay. Um, and we're having a lot, lot less failure rate on yeah. that. Hence, and and hence what are you taking yourself? 
for myself, I've yeah. got a, I've now got a T-zipper in my suit, Fine. so my okay. YKK did eventually fail. Yeah. Um, and then we start getting the new ones come mm-hmm. through. So I said, well, let's get one in my suit and actually do some diving with yeah, it, do some sure. testing with it. Sure. Go for the plastic. You're going to go for, for a plastic. the same reasons as you, the flexibility and the, the travel weight, really. That's cool. So the next thing we have is then the position of the zipper. So we can have the zip coming from the left or we can have the zip coming from the right. Right. Okay. So one of my questions for you is really about the, the shoulder dump valve. A uh, two part question. The first is really about does it ever get in the way if you're choosing a zip that's running from the left shoulder? Yeah. And then part two of that is that you know there's something which we refer to as a DIR position of the valve, mm-hmm. and sometimes you can move it, yep. sometimes it's fixed in place, and so it's about the interaction of that valve, that zipper, where should it all be? Mm-hmm. Um, be personally, I like it starting from the left, and I like the DIR position, but yep. the question is, what, what does Santi do about that? Okay, so the, the main reason, so originally we always had zippers coming from the left, so when, when we say left or right, it's always from where the zipper starts. So mm-hmm. coming from the left is where, as you've seen for many years, of where all dry suit mechanics have had that. Mm-hmm. And that's mainly the reason that came is because the majority of the divers are right-handed. Yep. So they like to come from the left and pull down to the right. Now, as we started then measuring much more ladies for dry suits, mm-hmm. um, we found that, like you said, the dry suit zipper was determining the place of the dump valve. So what we were finding with people with um, a lot narrower shoulders, yep. so by the time they've got the neck seal on, mm-hmm. then the zip was in place, mm-hmm. but then the dry suit dump, there was nowhere for it to go. Yes. And then it'd be in the wrong position. So that's when we said, right, okay, so we need to do something about this because the, the dry suit dump is one of the most important things on the dry suit. Yep. So then we offered it on the right instead. Um, there's also another key factor in this position as well as actually the neck ring because the neck ring takes up quite a large amount yes. of space on there as well. So then that then meant the neck ring's even further over the shoulder. So then we had the zip even further around mm-hmm. and then dump valve was yeah. on, on the inside of your armpit eventually. So, so what choices are there for the dump valve? Is the valve really in one place? So on the, the, dry suit with the, the dry suit valves are standards in the standard position and that doesn't change. If it means that the dump valve needs to move position. Santi would recommend we change something else, like move the zipper to the side Fine. or take away the neck ring. Mm-hmm. Um, you can also specify where you want the dump valve as well. Um, it's not a very standard thing that we do. It's normally a special request, but mm-hmm. it is very, it's possible for us to do it. You, we just need to get information from you guys exactly where you want that position. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, the DIR position that we spoke about is where Santi put their dry suit valves as a standard. So typically not nobody really has a problem with it, providing sure. it, we need to move yeah. something else. Okay. I mean, you mentioned the neck ring as well. I mean, I was going to ask you, I might as well do it now. Mm-hmm is of course yes there is a there is a size i think it's around 29 centimeters yeah. wide something like that for the ring um i mean who who shouldn't have the ring basically anyone so basically the terms on the diver's body size is, is who shouldn't have the ring and mm-hmm. um, the ring works quite well for a lot of people some people don't notice it at all some people struggle with it sitting on the shoulders because the webbing of the harnesses come over mm-hmm. there and mm-hmm. um, but typically it's typically smaller builded people with very narrow shoulders yep. that we say look it's not going to go to work for you because the neck ring is going to end up over the end of your yeah. shoulders. Um, so actually on the ladies first line, no neck rings are allowed. So you cannot order a lady first suit okay. with a neck ring installed. And if you would like it, it's a, they've got to be 100% sure that they can fit it in okay. properly and it'd be good, comfortable for you for mm-hmm. them to do it. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the difference between whether I mean, do, do, you, do you ever have any rings for people to try on and get a feel for how that might be for them? We don't here in the UK. The reason we don't here in the UK is we find a lot of the UK divers tend to go for neoprene neck seals. Um, one, because they're a little bit easier to field repair than latex yep. and just for the added warmth in the colder waters. Sure. Um, okay. The traveling diver, we do sell majority more of the necktie system for the obvious reason, but mm-hmm. you can just hot swap the seal on site. Yep. So if you bust one by the water, you can just go and quickly change yep. it and get in the water. And so SciTech actually have three versions, right? Yep. And then which which are the ones that are available or which are the ones that you recommend? So it's the, the, quick, the quick ring is the only one that uh, Santi offer, okay. um, which hasn't got the, the clips over it. It's just Fine. the standard push-in ring. So it's the middle one. That's it, the middle yeah. one. I can't yeah. remember the name, to be honest with you. So it's the it's the neck tight, the quick neck, and the over. Yeah, so it's the quick ring that actually yeah. fits the suits. 
We just need to also then establish which one you want to go for. So we'll, yeah, we'll go for the, the silicone neck ring. Silicone we'll neck go ring. for the plastic. Zip. And the plastic zipper. From the left or from the right? So I'll have it starting on the left I'll shoulder, start please. from the left, okay. Well, another kind of little added thing for the zipper going from the right as well is, is typically with people that are doing shutdowns in doubles, mm -hmm. a, lot pe a lot of people are right-hand dominant. So yes. it always means that the left post is always the hardest one for a lot of people to shut down. Now the left post is potentially we've got a neck ring in there yes. and we've got a zipper and we've got the dump valve. So there's quite um, a lot of stuff that's not very in flexible way. in that area. So we typically say if people are struggling to do shutdowns, even when the equipment's been fine-tuned in the right position, if mm -hmm. they're still struggling quite a lot, then we move the zipper to the right. Interesting. To just add that added little extra bit, mm -hmm. extra flexibility into the left arm, which makes life a little bit easier. Fine. But okay. With, with yourself diving inside, mate, I'm sure you don't grind that. Problem. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you, so we're talking about the neck ring. You talk about the dump valve. I yeah. mean, with the valves themselves, I mean, you have two types: the, the apex and the sitec. Yeah. What is the difference for you? <laughs> Honestly, in in terms of the dry suit valve, I personally don't notice any difference. Mm -hmm. I use both. I've got two suits. One's got sitec. Um, dump valve in it and one's yeah. got an apex high profile in it mm -hmm. um, there was a thing uh, a few years ago of the lower profile apex one leaking quite a lot which is now fixed mm -hmm. um, so in terms of the in terms of the, the two the two well, three options we have because we've got the low profile high profile apex and then yep. the side tech yep. across the three there's not really much difference okay. that me personally I I find mm -hmm. um, other divers do find that the side tech dumps a little bit better okay but for me personally I it doesn't, it doesn't sure. make any difference to me. But the different size holes in the suit, aren't they? So you can't mix and match. Correct, yeah. So if you're going for an apex valve, you can only change to an apex valve. Fine. If you go into a, a Cytec valve, you can only fit Cytec in. Um, the a the Cytec valve will seal into an apex hole, but the hole is just a little bit bigger. So Fine. it is possible to put a Cytec in an apex, but it's not recommended, but it will sure. work if you, if you needed to do that in the field. Okay, great. Um, in terms of the high profile and low profile, um, a lot of the divers we deal with here in the UK tend to go for high profile because mm -hmm. it doesn't bother them unless they've got a specific reason. So like side mount where your harness is really well fitted yeah. to the body, having a higher profile dump just makes it getting it on and off. That added a little bit more sure. complicated. Yeah. Yeah. So we see a lot of side mount divers go for the lower profile and people who are diving back mount tend to not really mm -hmm. have a preference really. So so I can see that the actual chest inflator valves are actually really nicely centered. Yeah. I mean, what, what are the limits to how far across or up and down it can go? What's the impact on the zip? So yeah, so we, let's let's use this suit for instance. So we get, we've got the actual rubber grommet itself. This rubber this dump valve can actually go in any position on the suit. Okay. So we've had some requests before for to have the inflation valve on the leg um, by some of the military guys. We've had some ladies that prefer it in the middle of the belly as well. Okay. So anywhere that it's not going to conflict with any any sort of construction of the dry yeah. suit is somewhere we, we can put the valve for divers. Okay. Um, so just for yourself as a random one, Vaz, if you wanted the dump valve in this position here, mm -hmm. that's also possible for riding. We don't go over that zip line there. Fine. But then, so I see you've, you've obviously got an outer protective zipper. Yeah. That comes with all of the suits as well? That comes as standard with all of the suits. Some some of the lower end suits are the Enduro and the E-Space. It's uh -huh. not a zipped cover. It's just two fo two pieces of fa fabric Flat. folded over each other. Fine. Um, and any of the other suits higher up are all zippered yeah. covers as well. Okay. And so, so now I see the arm cut. This this is the piece here which allows it to come into That's the... That's correct, yeah. So if you see there, yep. instead of it being straight and coming off in a T, it actually comes off in a very slight Y. That's where and that, 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 that's where that, that shoulder will cut into your armpit and Fine. then give you the full range of movement up in your arm. Okay. And so and these suits, these are the 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 collar. This is a, a warm collar, like a yep. standard so, feature. So the warm collar. So the warm collar is typically fitted to latex and the silicon systems okay. because they don't give any sort of thermal protection to the diver. With neoprene as standard, they don't come with the neoprene because mm -hmm. we've got the neoprene neck seal that's folded over already. Yep. So then with an added insulation, it's quite a lot it's of more bulk around mean. that area. Okay. It is an option. Some people do like to go for it sometimes, mm -hmm. but it is standard. It's not available. Okay. On the suit, if I look on the website, I see probably about 15 possible options yeah, yeah. that appear on the eLight page. Yeah. Some of those are actually come by default. Yeah. So I think Kevlar pads, for example. Correct, yeah. But some of those you can add. So yeah. what are the other options that are maybe interesting to have for the suit? So we've got quite. So we've got the, the uh, neck ring itself. Okay. That could be neoprene, neck seal, latex, neck seal, or the quick neck system. Mm -hmm. um, wrist can either be uh, latex glued direct to the suit. Mm -hmm. We can have the 
smart seal system into the suit directly. Yeah. Um, people, we, we also used to offer Kubi as a standard, so people could fit a Kubi ring system in there. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Santi, with releasing their own, have stopped selling Kubi as themselves. Oh, but if the diver option. wishes to have Kubi in, that is still a possibility, but we just need to send them to Santi for them to fit. Okay. Um, and that's the same with any other dry glove system as well. All dry glove systems are accepted by Santi because they used to use them quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if a diver has a specific one, like, I don't know, Rolock or something yep. else, yep. then we can just send it to Santé and they'll fit that to the suit. I mean, do you find any problems with, in a particular wrist system, you know, mm -hmm. gluing the ring for, let's say, Kubi versus gluing the ring for a, yeah, for a different so, brand? Yeah, so, the, so the, sol the solid rings like the Kubi are a solid ring, so it means it's quite hard for us to manipulate it into the yeah. suit. Um, and typically, the with the different sizes means they have to change things on the suit so yeah. the actual width yeah. of the arm as it comes out depending on the size of the cubi ring that's going in um so that all needs to be specified before ordering mm -hmm. so we don't get as far down the production line and then we need to change the arms on the but, suit. but for example you know gluing metal versus gluing a hard rubber or a yeah. soft rubber so in term in terms of gluing the hard metal you what with metal as it gets hot and gets cold it will contract yeah. um so we do find a few little problems depending on what the gluing environment with the metal rings are mm -hmm. going in mm -hmm. but with the plastic plastic rings and the, the rubber Fine. rings that we've got in the Santi suit, we don't really see much problem. Okay. Um, and it's, it's fairly easy to for, for a fix. I mean, so I understand, of course, the, the ability to change the wrist seal. I think that's great. Yeah. The smart seal, though, I mean, this is the flexible. Um, and, and what is it? Um, that allows the seal to still work. I mean, so are you finding just, it as reliable? It, it is literally just on friction. So the actual in the seal section, there's mm -hmm. no O-rings included in it at all. So this is a smart seal system itself. So we've got a rubber cover that basically just protects everything and makes mm -hmm. it all look nice. Um, in previous versions, this one was glued in, but this is now not glued in. It's just it's just laying on top of the seal. Fine. Um, so we roll this rubber cover back. You can also remove it as well, but it's quite stiff on there, so it's quite it's much easier to just remove mm -hmm. the rubber cover. Mm -hmm. We've got the wrist seal here with the ring inside, and what we do is just take a thumb, collapse the inner ring, and that just comes. And then that just comes straight out of the suit. And as you can see, that was there's no O rings in there. There's nothing actually holding it in there. It is just on friction. Okay. Um, and which allows us to have that flexibility with the yeah. outer ring moving. It moves the inner ring, yeah. and yeah. that keeps the seal inside. Yeah. And then from there, you can take. And are you finding that a popular option? A lot, a very, very popular option. It's one size. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have seen a, a few people with very, very big hands struggling with it because mm -hmm. it is the one size. But with it being flexible, it means it can go to an oval anyway. So we do gain size from there straight away um a lot of people have got moved to the santi system from other systems like kubi because of the flexibility mm -hmm. and the ease of use fine um because it's very easy to use it's very simple yep and there's not much to it and as divers we don't we, we carry a lot of equipment anyway so the li le yep. little equipment we can take the better i mean i'm looking forward to trying it because in, in side mount diving we're putting our hands in between the body and the tank a lot yep. of the time and so the less we can have on the wrist will always seem mm -hmm. to work. The thing that I always kind of point out to people is obviously it's, it is a flexible ring, mm -hmm. but it, will, it won't it will always go straight back to the same position. So what I always recommend to people is once everything's fitted, to squash the ring a little bit and it will stay in a just rough snap. oval position. And ellipse, so yeah. that makes it that little bit more streamlined as well. Some Fine. people, again, don't bother. They just leave it fully fully circular. Mm -hmm. But well, I always personally like it because I'm in them out of my pockets quite a lot getting things in and out. So I just sure. prefer it to be a little bit more oval. Got it. Um, so it won't just always spring back in that position. So you Got can it. keep it in an oval position. And this would be a suit then with a just without a ring system? That's correct. So that's just a suit straight with a latex seal. Fine. And then this has got our older model of smart seals. So there's nothing in terms of internal construction oh, that's these, changed. Oh, these changed then, did that's they? That's right, yeah. So there's now two, this This is one of the older types. And we've now got this rub, newer type. So the actual yeah. internal ring's not changed at all. Fine. Or the only thing that's changed is this outer cover. So this outer cover was originally made of a, a type of rubber. Okay. And as you can see, you might be able to see from this here look it's bad just little. starting to crack a little so because this, we saw that the newer one. that's Fine. it and because we saw that we started to change some ideas and now we've actually gone with a silicon based one Fine. um so there's no track no no cracking or anything involved in it but the only problem is because silicon's a more oil based seal mm -hmm. we can't actually glue it to the suit so it's had to be for the, had that's to be why you have the ring but in terms of the latex versus the silicone i mean if you've got a ring system that will take either take either who's taking latex honestly in... it's just with, with most divers it's just a matter of comfort some yeah. People are more comfortable in latex. Some mm -hmm. people are more comfortable in uh, silicone. Okay. The latex ones are a lot more durable mm -hmm. and are less prone to small punctures. Um, but the silicon, as you may have tried it yourself, is a lot, lot smoother, a lot more yeah. easier to get on and off, and it feels more comfortable on the diver as well. 
And then the suit includes two thigh pockets. Yep. And then, are there any options to move those pockets, say, a little bit round? Yeah, so the there's, there's the, su the or... suit comes standard with the two pockets, and mm. that's across any suit. If you wanted to take a pocket off, that is also a possibility. If okay. you would like it moving as well, that is also a possibility, but it just needs to be specified when ordering. Fine. Um, so, okay. so you guys with, with side mount, typically like them a little bit further forward. Um, so having that option is Well, actually, yeah, for two cylinders, forwards can work, but yeah. it, then when you add some stages, they then cover they're, they're the pockets. Then they're covered from the stages. So actually placing them around to the buttock for okay. the hamstrings tends yeah. to be more uh, popular. Yeah. But then on the actual pocket itself, are there Velcro closing pockets? Yep, yeah, so the, the, the pockets themselves are all Velcro cro okay. closing. Um, on the plus models, on the actual flap themselves, they've got a, a zippered this was the small question, there's a in there small for put, outer... For, that's it, for putting small accessories like spare cookies or whatever you want to Perfect. put in there and tools. Perfect. Um, and that's available on the plus models. On the non-plus models, there's only one zip on one pocket. Fine. On one of the pocket flaps. Internally, inside this, uh, inside the bellows pockets, on either, on the front and the back, there's mm -hmm. a big bungee loop to clip SMBs, cameras, whatever you want to put sure. in your pocket. Okay. And there's also a slate pocket on in on each pocket side. with a smaller piece of bungee inside there. Well. Okay, cool. When we talk about moving the pocket to the to the rear, yeah, presumably we're limited a bit about the seam on the crotch. Correct. Or... Yeah. So what would it be limited? So typically, what with the pockets, what they what how they're made for the suit is the middle of the pocket will match this middle seam on the leg. Fine. So where the two and materials that's the midline meet, down the body. Exactly, midline straight down the body, and that's typically where the pocket would go. We can move. The, we can position the pockets further round. So as you can see from here there would be an allowance that Santi would only let you go to, yeah. but typically most people would only want to move them four to five centimeters anyway, because sure. four to five centimeters is a quite di quite a big distant, distance yep. on this area. Yep. So moving it there would be enough to just bring the pockets round Yeah, enough. I mean, if the tank is sitting here, what I really like the idea of just a pocket coming a little further behind, yeah. so it's not getting in as much of the way. Yeah. And so this, this is the outer zipper? That's correct. So on the zipper flap. What have we got in there? We've got the outer zipper. So inside this zipper here, we've got, one piece of bungee on one side and another piece of bungee on there as well. Fine. So you okay. can clip small accessories to yeah, it. Double and that's zip. Okay. On the end of the flap, there's a small piece of tubing also stitched into the flap. Oh, easy so to pull. Easy, yeah. easy to pull and easy to feel in dry gloves. We've got a nice big Velcro section on there. So when mm -hmm. you do shut the pocket, it does actually stay shut. Yep. Um, internal of the pocket, as we look inside, we've got on either side, front and back, yep. two nice big, good, strong pieces of bungee for you mm -hmm. to be able to clip things to. Inside the pocket, we've also got our slate or wet note pocket. Fine. And then in there, there's also another small piece of bungee. And you have some drain. That's it. We've got drain a drain hole straight in yeah. the bottom. Great. I'm guessing there's a P-valve option as yeah, well. Yeah, so P-valve, we offer the Apex P-valve and the Halcyon P-valve, mm -hmm. um, and that can be fitted to either leg. There's a very slight cost difference between the two. Fine. And they're both a balanced P-valve, so they both do exactly the same job, just a little bit of different detail. Right, so. okay, okay. And, is, and I think that's pretty much all the options. That's pretty much all the options, yeah. Okay. So then, in terms of the, um, the sizes then, you do you rank, like, rate those against a... Uh, a stock size to see where we fit. So yeah, so what we've got from Santi is actually the um, the two different measurement forms. Mm -hmm. So we've got ladies dry suit and undersuit, and then we've got men's dry suit and undersuit. Okay. Um, and these are all the sizes that are available in, in, in the Santi range. And under each size is all of the sizing tolerances that, that, that okay. are, the suit are built to. And these are real life size, so body size, not as okay. the end product size. So what we typically do is now we're taking your measurements if you're going for a mate to fit suit. Not all of the measurements on this form are required, uh, sorry, on this form are required for this form. Mm -hmm. These are just general, the general measurements that are most important to us. Yeah. Um, so we just run down the sheet, fill it, fill in your size right. next to it okay. and then go across it highlighting which which suit would be the best typically we'd go for the most measurements in one suit would normally be the best but best but would normally be the best for the diver but in some situations it doesn't quite work out like that depending on what other adjustments we need to do to the suit um because some adjustment some adjustments reflect other measurements Fine. as well okay. so it's just kind of determining that determining okay. that section so one option um, that's interesting always that crops up is the is the rock boot yep. versus the integrated boot. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we see a lot of problems with you know gas in the foot, 
size of the foot pocket, connection to the fin, for example. Yeah. I mean, what, what are your thoughts about it or what do you recommend for, for, people? For me, for me personally, I, I kind of base it on what I'm doing with my suit. So I've got two suits. I've got one suit with the flex soles on and mm -hmm. I've got one suit with socks and rock boots on. For me, the kind of air integration thing, it doesn't, I don't notice it all that much. And mm -hmm. with, the, with the boots to the flex, uh, with the, sorry, flex soles to the socks, mm -hmm. the flex soles are essentially a sock with a, just a very thin sole put on the bottom anyway. So they're a very tight fit in boot mm -hmm. um so air integration between both we don't see much of a problem okay. especially with santi with other brands we do see it a little bit different yeah. depends on the size of the suit uh, the size of the boot and the build of the suit and mm -hmm. um, but between the two options under the santi range we don't see all that uh, that much difference okay so then it tends to come down to what the diver wants so like if you're dragging dragging yourselves inside the caves and outside of mines and bits and bobs all the time mm -hmm. it makes sense to go for socks and rock boots because you're walking on rough terrain yeah um, rocks and stuff all the time whereas with the thin flex soles eventually we will start to put a puncher in them. Fine. Um, and they've also not got much grip on the bottom. So if you're walking on that sort of terrain, you want quite a, well, a good yep. foot in, so you potentially slip in a bit, something like that. So it kind of determines what the diver is doing or planning to do in, mm -hmm. um, to which which way they go down there. So they're the Santi Prima Loft socks. Yeah. Um, so when you get these, are these a left and right? Or so just, yeah, they're a left they're and right. The way you determine is the label on the side. On so the, the label wants to be outside of the foot. Um, so the one of your right hand is for the right hand. Fine, okay. Um, so they're a two layer design, a premium loft material. Mm -hmm. The outer layer is a water resistant material. So if there's yeah. any water ingress, it will run on the outside of the sock and not soak through mm -hmm. and stay on the actual suit itself. Okay. Obviously, if there's a big flood of water coming into the suit, eventually it will get to the internals of the, of the yeah. sock itself, but it does resist a water coming in, so a small leak, it will, will prevent that coming yeah, through okay, the sock nice. and actually getting your foot cold. <laughs> okay, so we'll try with the right. Right foot? Yep. Okay. So that's an XL right sock, mate. So that's... Uh, and this is what we'll get on the actual suit itself. That's exactly what you get on the suit. So the, the socks are still stitched into the suit. So that top zip, that stops top stitch line will yeah. be pretty similar to what we that's had on this what's... suit. Fine. Um, and that'll be stitched straight into the suit. So, you so can... they're going to be stitched or taped and glued? They'll be stitched on the outside of the suit and then glued on the inside. Fine. Okay. And that's the difference between the integrated boot Correct. And the sock. Yeah. Okay. Can you kind of wear these all year round? I wear them all year round, to be honest with you. They're, they're, they're a very warm sock, but I don't know, I don't feel like they're too warm in the warmer climates either. Um, and it, it's, I, 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 I'm a jet fin kind of man, so I prefer a little bit more buoyancy around my feet as well when I jet okay. fins on. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can see that, I mean, there's... Uh... It's actually a pretty good fit straight yeah. out of the... Yeah, so that, that XL sock's actually a 9 to 10. Fine. Um, and the next size up, which is double XL, is, is a 10 to 11. Yeah, fine. Okay, cool. So what you're looking for, Vaz, is not that it's not too tight through the middle of the foot. So it's not o over the top of your actual foot. And yeah. then, obviously, the width, it's not feel like it's crushing your, your foot side to side on the width. No, no, not at all. I mean... And, you know, I mean, I mean, I'm probably the opposite as you. I prefer a, a slimmer, a slimmer fit. Yes, yeah, so a lot of the time I'm just taking a, a fairly standard hiking sock, uh, which is thinner uh, because if I'm not needing such protection. So let's just see if there's much noticeable difference. Obviously, it's a thinner sock. And is there, is there a heated sock available? So to, to sport divers, unfortunately not. They're only for military use. Okay. Um, so they've got the fully heated undersuit and gloves, um, and the socks are only available to the military, unfortunately. Oh, that's a shame. Where well, we can sign up, maybe. <laughs> so obviously we do this process with the customers anyway. We, if they're going to go for socks, we try the socks on, make sure the socks are the right size, yeah. or we try the flex or boots on and actually make sure that they're happy with them before we do the ordering process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and, and this is the, the newer or the older style boot? This is the newer style flex sole. Flex sole, um, okay. So now, so the older style was actually stitched into the suit, stitched then glued on the inside. Yep. And now the newer style is a little bit uh, small design change in the boot itself in construction to make mm -hmm. it a little bit stronger. Fine. And also it's now glued into the suit. So it means okay. it's a lot easier for us to change. To change it out. And this presumably is just to, which, to try to minimize air Correct. migration. Correct. Yeah. Fine. Okay. And on the back of the boot, you've also got a little tab there to help you pull it on. To help you pull it up. So you're also one of the, the biggest repair centers, I think, and um, doing, I guess you're doing some annual maintenance. Santi have a, 
a uh, stay dry warranty. That's I correct, mean, yeah. What, what, what is that? So the stay dry warranty is kind of a, a scheme for us to get, get your suits back and make sure they're in tip top condition. Um, so every year when you get, well, when, you're, when your suit arrives, there's a little card in your suit that will come on the inflation valve mm -hmm. and that's to sign up for the stay dry club. If you don't sign up for it, you don't get it, unfortunately. And um, what the stay dry club does, it gives you an extended warranty. So mm -hmm. it takes your warranty from three years to five years on the suit. And it's free of charge? Totally free of charge. Okay. Um, and every year, while you own the suit as the first owner, mm -hmm. Santi will pay for a leak test or a pressure test on that suit every single year for you. Okay. And also cover the cost of service in the dry suit valves and any other little general maintenance things, maybe a small leak on a seam or whatever co comes across, they will cover all that straight away for the diver. And, and who covers the cost for the shipping of the suit to or from? So the, the shipping and the shipping of the suit to and from is, is a repair centre is covered by the diver, mm -hmm. um, and obviously any warranty work or anything like that is covered all by Santi. Fine. Okay. So when you do get the suits in, I mean, what what are the typical things you can expect that either have a bit of wear and tear in them? What are the sorts of things that you're seeing happen to suits? Me, me, the most of the wear and tear on the suit starts to show from the boots. Mm -hmm. um, and not so rock, uh, sorry, not socks so much, but on the flex sole boots where people have been walking around with them, the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the tread on the base tends to go quite smooth. And eventually with it, with it rubbing down and going smooth, then we'd start to see a few leaks in the boots. Um, Zippers are quite one of the biggest things that we have to change quite a lot on suits. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's just the, zi the zi zippers that we can yeah. get hold of. Um, so they're kind of the main items that we do have to change in terms of wear and tear. Mm -hmm. Seals, of course, do will need changing eventually. Mm -hmm. Depending on how well the divers looked after the suit and yeah. uh, maintain the suit will depend on what longevity okay. they get out of the seals. Um, so, yeah. so, I mean, I've seen there's obviously information about how to pack a suit when you're traveling with it. But what's your view on, say, using a lubricant to get into the suit or even using talcum powder, yeah. which I've heard can dry seals out? So, yeah, so you, the use of talcum powder is actually not a recommended by a lot of manu dry suit manufacturers now. Mm -hmm. We tend to recommend uh, things like seal slip. Um, and there's also some other things. A lot of people used to say that talc used to actually long to the made the li life of the uh, latex seals longer. It actually doesn't because it dries the seal out and, mm -hmm. stop, and causes that cracking that we see on there. Um, so we recommend other products like uh, Seal Saver. That actually is a, a, an oil-based grease for the latex itself mm -hmm, to, mm -hmm. to prolong the life of it. Um, with a lot of the use with talcum powder causes a lot of problems for divers, actually, um, especially in big excess. So blocking mm -hmm. of dump valves or blocking inflation valves is something we see quite a lot. And sticky yeah. inflation valves is something we see quite a lot as well from people using talcum powder. That completes video three. If you've not seen videos one and two, go ahead and watch those as we go through more details about the suit fitting, step-by-step -step measurement guide, as well as all the key features on the suit and what flexibility you have when ordering them.